Namaste and welcome. I am Kamari, best-selling author and intuitive coach, master healer and animal mystic. And I've been endorsed by and, and hired by and shared the stage with world-renowned spiritual teachers and cutting-edge scientists, multi-million dollar coaches and CEOs, world-famous psychics and Broadway performers, Olympic show jumpers, and international polo clubs. And I believe that intuitive energy healing is the most powerful force for change on Earth. I've created, as an example, a six-figure transformational business where I'm teaching internationally in fabulous locations, doing exactly what I love, truly helping people and animals at the deepest levels. I am now in a loving and totally supportive relationship. We just celebrated our 12th year anniversary. I have a beautiful home and gorgeous heaven on earth garden. And perhaps most of all, I feel truly accomplished and aligned with my highest purpose. And yet, I have to admit, my biggest accomplishment and joy and mission is empowering you, the teachers, the healers, and the conscious leaders. I like to call you the planet shifters. Empowering you to unwrap your intuitive and healing and co-creative manifesting abilities so you can create the life of your dreams. I also believe, actually I know, <laughs> that everyone is intuitive and everyone can be a healer and an alchemist. I like to call everything that I do energy alchemy because it means changing um, from one state to another, from happy, uh, sad to happy, from sick to well. And so everyone has these innate abilities, but mostly they're lying dormant. And also they've been very suppressed, you know, because it wasn't always cool to be a healer. Uh, not talking just this life. <laughs> Historically, um, it also wasn't cool to claim your co-creative powers and your direct connection to source. I'm here to tell you that it is time and that all of your dreams can come true through the power of intuitive energy healing. You know, I have to admit it wasn't always this way. <laughs> I made pretty much every mistake along the way. Um, when I was an attorney, I um, was working at Legal Aid and my father became very ill and eventually he he died from lung cancer. And I remember sitting at his bedside thinking, there's got to be more. I want to do and offer more. And this led me on a lifelong journey to study with many spiritual masters and intuitive healers and teachers, even the animal communicators. And I, I have to say, my journey, <laughs> I feel like I just kept jumping off the cliff, you know, into the unknown because I did have the courage to follow my heart, yet I didn't have nearly the skills that I would love to share with you now <laughs> that I have gained along the way to empower you and to hopefully cut your time um, way shorter than mine. I was married and divorced twice. I um, declared bankruptcy. Uh, bunch of years ago I was even homeless and luckily I had friends and family that put me up but I truly had no home no place to live and I also began to work non-stop for pennies for years uh, with the idea that I was doing selfless service of course I was never serving myself <laughs> I had no time for vacations no play time it was all very serious you know I was incredibly shy and I lacked confidence in my abilities. Um, I, I dreaded coming in front of an audience and speaking about what I do. As a matter of fact, I can't even believe I did this, but I used to send people when they'd ask, what should I do, you know, for my problems and my illnesses and my back pain? And, <laughs> and I'd say, oh, there's a great acupuncturist or a chiropractor down the street, you know, because <laughs> I thought it was total ego to talk about myself and what I could do. I thought they should just somehow 
um, know it. And um, so I've had many things to overcome, many challenges and limiting beliefs and ideas. I had a huge belief about money that it was totally not spiritual, not only to talk about money, but to touch it, to think about it, to manage it, to pay attention to it. So <laughs> I had a long way to go in terms of claiming all of these aspects. And um, today I would like to help you, um, share with you actually, some of the things I've learned along the way that hopefully will help you understand what it even is. What is intuitive clarity? What is it that I'm sharing? Because many of you are actually already doing it uh, and you don't even recognize it. And others of you are somewhere along that continuum. For me, I thought I had to, well, I had no idea how to teach it. Years ago, someone asked me to teach animal communication. I was doing it for many years. I knew how to teach Reiki. I'm a Reiki master and I knew exactly how to attune people to that higher level of energy healing. And yet, I had no idea how to share the intuition that had been awakened through that process. And so I, I said no and when I was asked to teach for, for a while and finally she said, I have 10 people coming. <laughs> and I was gifted with um, beautiful meditation at that time. And um, it helped me have the courage to begin to teach. And it's, it's become a passion to begin to observe and break down the steps that I'm actually doing, the subtle spaces and techniques that I'm applying, and to be able to share them more easily. So you don't have to go through 25 years, <laughs> hopefully, to um, get where I am and hopefully even surpass where I am. So let's talk about the keys to clarity. Um, there are five that I'm going to speak of. And the very first one is setting clear intentions. So many of you are saying, I just, I don't think I am very intuitive. I have so much doubt. I can't, um, I can't tell if it's my mind. You know, uh, many of these beliefs you have to grab hold of <laughs> and begin to root out and reset a clear intention. Everything is energy. All our thoughts, all our emotions, all our fears and feelings about things have energy and they carry a charge and they will lower your frequency and they will be come cluttering up your mind when you go to begin to connect with an animal or another person in intuitive way. And so set an intention for yourself. Um, I can give you a few samples. One of my favorites are the simplest. My intuition is increasing in new and wonderful ways. Daily. Uh, I like to add time frames on things. <laughs> or how about I accept the full extent of my intuitive gifts. Hmm. In alignment with the highest good and my sole purpose. Highest good of all, you can say. If you're worried about getting it wrong or saying something that's not truly pure and helpful. How about this one? I trust myself and my awakening inner knowing. Hmm. I am willing to listen to my intuition. How about that? Many of us are getting these little divine sparks, these inspired thoughts and knowings and feelings, and yet we don't act on them. We don't receive and listen to them. And I'm willing to take aligned actions now. We'll talk about that a little later. So create one for yourself if none of these work for you, but grab one and begin to work with it. I know that it will begin to help you uh, every time you have a limiting thought or a doubt. Um, it's okay. Just reset with your new intention and it will go a long, long way to developing your, your intuitive abilities and uncovering what's already happening, perhaps. So. An energy healing tip here, you may have to clear old contracts and agreements, old limiting beliefs and vows that you took or made that have the tendency to hide or block your awareness and your intuition. So I uncovered several of these along the way and uh, this is something I do for my clients. Um, when we come up against one of them, I help them clear them. And so 
uh, very simply right now, you can intend and repeat, I release any contracts or vows or agreements that are limiting my intuitive gifts and that are no longer serving my highest good and sole purpose now. And breathe. This will get you started. It may not be everything you need. <laughs> it certainly has been a journey for me and for my clients to continue to release many of these veils, these uh, things that we have set in place, not just that other people or our society or culture puts on, but some of the hardest ones to let go of are ones that at one point or other we thought were helpful. You know, it's not to judge yourself here, but um, but that we felt it wise or life-saving even <laughs> to hide our gifts, uh, to kind of dumb down our light and our awareness uh, for whatever reason so that we could please other people and didn't intimidate them, perhaps. Or perhaps that we were being um, attacked. But for whatever reason, we made these agreements and we have to clear them and reset to a new agreement. So that is uh, clarity key number one, setting clear intention. And the sub, the sub key there is clearing the old intentions that may block you. So let's move on to clarity key number two. And of course, each one of these keys um, I can teach for many, many years on. <laughs> it is an ongoing peeling of the onion, just so you know. <laughs> There's way more to them than this, but I, I'm loving that I can now give you a framework or a structure. And before, I had only shared this with my private clients. I just got this download last year of the keys to clarity. I began to see the structure within which I was operating when I was doing my intuitive thing. A lot of people think it's a gift and I have been able to break it down for many of my students now. It's really exciting. So key number two, clarity key number two is frame a precise question. This sounds perhaps really unspiritual, but <laughs> it's very practical. Many times we go in um, our inner guidance system, you know, is always available, but we may go in with a very complex or convoluted or muddy question, or perhaps not even the correct question. Um, uh, correct meaning the one we really need to get to in order to have that breakthrough uh, and get that divine wisdom and clarity that we're longing for. And so you need to take baby steps and break down the question. So if you're dealing with a very complex issue, for instance, um, my client just uh, last week was um, feeling very muddy and she's actually quite intuitive as uh, we have uncovered for her. And yet this question was tripping her up and she knew she didn't have clarity and she felt very pressured. And so we broke it down in this way. So for example, her question was, um, I, I wonder if I should buy this car. It's um, very eco-friendly. Uh, it is on sale today. <laughs> I have to decide today, you know. And um, uh, it's a it's an issue because my my spouse is out of town, and I would have to sign the loan agreement alone. And I'm not sure if that's the best thing, especially since we're not even clear if we're going to be together. <laughs> so you can see how complex this question is getting. There's about five parts to this, right? This car, uh, today, this deal, um, keep looking for another car, uh, do I sign the loan with or without him, what's in my best interest, you know, legally, and by the way, um, buying major purchases now, is, is that really ideal? So. So that's what we had to go through. It wasn't that she couldn't get clarity. It was that she had to chunk down the questions, you see. And ultimately, the question that she didn't ask that came up as the correct first question um, that I helped her get to was, um, should I first find some legal advice about making major purchases at this time as we may be contemplating splitting up? You know, what is the best way? So it's the reason she wasn't getting clarity about this car, this deal, today. Because <laughs> there was really an underlying bigger issue that she had to resolve first and get clarity on first, you see. So framing a precise question actually takes a great amount of skill 
and tenacity and uh, insight and patience sometimes and a willingness to kind of walk around the issue kind of 360 degrees sometimes really looking at it from different angles if you feel muddy don't just assume you're not clear uh, you may be asking the wrong questions so hopefully that can cut an enormous amount of time it has really been a breakthrough piece for many of my clients is to ask a different question and uh, not assume you're not getting clarity but assuming that the way that you're asking or the very focus is off a little bit and so refocusing can put you right back in that stream of divine inspiration and wisdom coming through so clarity key number three and this might be where the greatest amount of work is, play, <laughs> practice, however you want to see it. Um, raise your vibration. Raise your energetic frequency. What does that even mean? I'm hearing that a lot today. What does that mean? Raise your frequency. Well, crystal clarity is a natural side effect when you are in a very high energetic state. High consciousness, um, high energy frequency or vibration. This is the demonstration of all of your thoughts combined with all of your feelings and your awareness, your spiritual consciousness. So that determines your frequency. So this is where many people are getting stuck. They say, I'm doing, I have very clear intentions, I have very clear questions and goals, um, but I'm not at all co-creating my dream life. I'm very stuck. And this is where they're stuck because actually, you've heard that saying, you cannot solve a problem from the energy uh, that the problem was created in. You really have to come out of that into the vibration. You need to become a vibrational match for that which you desire. So if you desire this life of peace, you need to start raising your vibration to peace. And if you are in constant chaos and crisis and... Um, uh, feeling very down and deflated and that's not really a vibrational match so that is also co-creating and so setting your space with energy tools and techniques this is um, the holy grail of what I do this is where the magic really happens I have enormous uh, bag full of energy tools and techniques I never run out it seems um, and uh, we play continually with them. So it's not just, oh, learn that, check, you know. It is continually resetting to these states of clarity, certainty, capable, and powerful. And finding that inner alignment. I actually can now see, feel, and know if you are in the central alignment of clarity. There is an exact space and I know how to guide you there, um, which uh, we do in my courses, and I will share with you many, many different ways. So the things that help raise your vibration, just to tick them off, some of them you may be doing. Um, energy empowerment tools and energy management tools, energy healing, Reiki, has been a huge impact on growing my intuition. Meditation, all forms of meditation can raise your frequency and bring you more clarity. Sound healing, I love playing with the crystal bowls, as you know. Uh, they can very, very quickly bring your vib vibration up and uh, just love them. <laughs> sound healing. Um, you can use your own voice. The human voice is an incredible healing tool. And uh, there are many ancient traditional sound healing techniques. Chanting is incredible. Chanting mantras that are infused with uh, incredible vibrations. There's um, essential oils. Some of the highest frequencies on the planet are from the plants. Rose oil has the highest frequency known um, at this time. And so many, many ways. Going out in nature can be a way to raise your vibration. 
you know, doing things you love that make you happy, dancing, <laughs> can raise your vibration. So you see, um, you need to have tools in place and you need to practice them daily and sometimes hourly <laughs> to hold a higher frequency so that you're in alignment with what it is you want. You can't be here and say, I want here and just say it. You have to start shifting into that frequency that is a vibrational match for all of those wonderful things that you desire. And so, clarity key number four, I just wanted to say about the third key, that is what I spend most of the time on <laughs> with my clients and most of the uh, things that people need help with and support with. So, let's go to clarity key number four. Acknowledge and accept what you do receive. So many times flashes come. Um, we'll get insights or inspiration can come in an image, a word, a phrase, a whole downloaded knowing that wasn't there a moment ago. But we instantly reject it. We just, um, we have a filter already on that says, nope, that's, that's just me. That's just my mind. And so acknowledging, I just, I just think I saw the color yellow. This happened in a meditation early, early on in my fight, first year um, meditating with my first spiritual teacher. I was meditating and I had this question about all the spiritual beings. Were they really real? You know, <laughs> all these deities and gods and goddesses. And I just was very doubting, actually. I'm quite the skeptic. After all, I was a lawyer. <laughs> I have a very... Uh, skeptical mind, healthy skepticism, I say. And I was asking if this, any of this is real, you know, that I was learning about. And so I saw this color yellow and it flashed a, a, a microsecond, but something said, follow the yellow, go back into it, ask about it. Where is the yellow taking me? And this beautiful meditation and experience of a divine being blessing me on that day was um, all from just not dismissing yellow because I had no idea what it meant and yellow in and of itself doesn't mean anything but I followed it, I grabbed it, I acknowledged and accepted that perhaps um, if I focus on that yellow that something else might happen and so you take baby steps and accept what's happening uh, and I always tell my clients in my animal communication courses this is an intuitive gift to connect with animals intuitively. I say, just get your doubt to 51%. You don't have to believe it's true and stake your life on it <laughs> or ask someone else to stake their life on it. <laughs> Whatever it is you're receiving, images or words or even feelings. But can you get to 51%? Perhaps what I'm receiving right now is a spark of my inner knowing. Perhaps it could help me or someone else. Perhaps it's real. 51%, can you do that? Everyone in my class says, oh, come on, I can do that. 51%, that's, that's workable. And that's a working space to begin with. So baby steps. One thing you receive, you may not get the rest until you acknowledge that you received that one thing. Get curious, ask questions, and you will be amazed how it unfolds. So many of my students were seeing that I was um, very fluent in my space when I'm teaching and healing and uh, doing sessions with people and with animals. It seems like I'm just in this stream and it's all connected. But behind the scenes, what I finally was able to teach was how I am constantly asking questions about the feeling I just got. Was that upset? Was that... Uh, feeling of, of abandonment, you know, what was that feeling that I just got? And I am doing it just very, very quickly, so it appears that it's seamless, but the truth is there are many, many steps. Tell me more about that energy that I just felt in my heart. Is that you? Is that what I'm feeling? Uh, and I did it with a horse, an Olympic uh, show jumper one day, and it was incredible. I was able to break down for my student who was right there what I was asking, how I was 
going from one sensation to the next to the next and how it seemed very seamless. But the truth is there were many, many baby steps and the um, acknowledging and accepting what I was receiving from the horse and then trying to express it, trying to put words on what often is not words, um, really, really helped break it down. And we had an incredible breakthrough. Key number five. Again, this is where a lot of people fall down. They think that, um, or they know they're getting d d divine inspiration. They're getting a deep and inner knowing, if you want to claim it that way. Uh, it doesn't matter what you label it truly. Um, as we begin to hear the whispers of our soul, we need to take aligned action for the full song, you know, or the full story to unfold. So, if we begin to play <laughs> with opening our intuition, but we're not willing to step out and respond or act or um, follow it, it's like a muscle, you know, if we don't use it, <laughs> it will atrophy. And so, uh, you know, many times you'll get hints about taking, you get an image or a, a thought, I should really take my keys even though I'm not driving. Something's telling me to take my keys. And then you go, that makes no sense. I'm not driving. I don't need my keys. And later on, you realize you needed your keys. <laughs> you know, little things like that happen all the time. And so as you become aware of those little promptings, you know, those little whispers of soul and spirit, you may um, need, in order to strengthen and develop and awaken your clarity, your intuitive clarity, you may need to take more aligned action with that in order for it to truly blossom. And I tell you, all of your dreams can come true through this power of intuitive energy healing. And if you truly care about people and animals and you want to make a difference, a huge difference I might say in the world, and take the best possible care of yourself and your loved ones, your friends, your family, your clients, um, and even your animals and the planet. Uh, you can do distant healing, intuitive coaching from anywhere in the world. You can literally create your dream life around this blessing, this gift, this, I don't even want to say gift, this skill. You can set your own hours and become your own boss, all while enjoying this amazing uh, impact, personal and uh, healing for yourself that this energy healing um, and intuition can give you. So let me ask you now, if you're, whether you're a newbie to all of this and you're just starting out on your path or you're already a healing professional, I work with many, many healing professionals, doctors, <laughs> veterinarians, holistic healthcare practitioners, um, coaches, all kinds of therapists, body workers, yoga teachers, and um, Wherever you're at, let me ask you right here, right now, what blocks you from diving deeper into your intuitive healing and manifesting skills so that you can create your version of heaven on earth, your dream life? For the last 25 years, I've been hearing things like, Kamari, you know, I'm so isolated where I am. I just can't talk about it. I have nobody to share what's happening with me and so I don't feel safe talking about my spiritual and healing gifts and what's going on energetically for me, these shifts. Um, I hear I need more support, more guidance, more practice. <laughs> I need more confidence and clarity about my direction. What does it mean for me you know, to, to have these gifts? How can I serve um, in, in the way I'm supposed to? How can I reach my soul purpose? Um, I hear from my clients for forever, I have doubts, I still have doubts, I need to release my doubts, <laughs> my limiting beliefs. Well, I have to tell you, I still have doubts too. I've just made that decision to continue on, despite what comes up. That is too important to reach all of you. It's too important to share what I have been given. And so, um, I, I hear, what else? Um, I need more affordable uh, 
I have more access. I can't always travel to workshops. I can't do live events. I, I am a zillion miles away in Australia, in Europe, in South Africa. So um, I also hear I need help valuing myself and claiming and communicating my gifts. Um, I'm doing healing work, but I'm not very good at sharing it. I need these things. I need help to reach my ideal clients and to get paid what I am worth, what this um, is worth, how I know how valuable it is. Um, a AKA, I need to quit my day job and I need to make a real living. <laughs> I need to support my family and I need more freedom so I can truly dive in and focus on my spiritual path and my healing um, skills and abilities. And so, I have to tell you, I've been listening <laughs> for a long time. And I know that for those of you who are asking to go deeper and get more support, more quickly and more easily and more affordably, your prayers are answered. I am thrilled to share with you the grand opening of my Intuitive Healing Cafe. And I received this inspiration while I was in a teaching in paradise this year in Panama. Beautiful place and of course the king of coffee. And I was in all these amazing international cafes where people were having amazing new experiences every day. And I wanted to create this online global community for all of you. So my vision for my Intuitive Healing Cafe um, is to awaken and strengthen your innate and healing and intuitive gifts and your manifesting abilities so we can co-create our dreams together. Finally, uh, I, I wanted to share sacred space with you to celebrate the glory and, I have to admit, the oftentimes difficult and challenging times that it is being a spiritual, per, uh, a spiritual being in a human body at perhaps the most exquisitely amazing and deeply challenging times uh, perhaps forever in history. And so, as my beloved partner, Kamara, if you know him, <laughs> Uh, when I ask him, well, how would you like to share your incredible wisdom? He was a Swami and a spiritual seeker. He traveled to India and lived with um, gurus, many famous gurus. And um, he, when I ask, how does he want to share from his amazing heart space and powerful wisdom and knowing, he always says, let's just hang out, you know, <laughs> he's German. <laughs> So this cafe is the perfect solution, S-O-U-L, to creating this wonderful hangout <laughs> where we all get to share powerful wisdom, uh, teachings, and uh, intuitive healing gifts and skills. Uh, you'll receive monthly audio and video training from me, uh, uh, energy attunements, um, all things energy alchemy energy healing, animal communication, intuitive development, practice, manifesting skills, co-creation, uh, meditation, many of you are challenged meditating, um, channeling, divine wisdom channeling, vibrational and sound healing, study this for many years, healing with essential oils and so much more that is new coming through now. And so you'll also receive um, I felt this was very important, a live call with me, a Q&A, &A, and um, so you can personally get your burning questions answered, get on the spot intuitive coaching and energy healing. You will receive a private online community, so we have a safe, focused space where we can share best practices, and you can share what's working for you. Um, conscious healing, and holistic health resources, very, very important to share what's out there. And mostly to connect with like-minded, spiritually aware soul brothers and sisters. You can even ask to receive a cafe buddy so you have someone to practice with and share, validate, and perhaps hold you accountable to uh, going for your dreams and keeping to your practices. 
and you'll also receive special discounts on courses and retreats with me. Um, and I just added, because <laughs> I know many of you are very into your animals and really want to understand more how to help them. And so there'll be a monthly animal communication drawing that a member will win, private session with me. And also we'll share the, the picture and the recording on our community in the Facebook group so all of you can begin to practice um, your intuitive skills through the animal communication work. So it's a great way to practice and I look forward to um, sharing also that with you. So just for joining I want to share with you what you also receive. As soon as you enter this cafe, this online community, you'll receive bountiful bonuses and I believe they're well over a thousand dollars the value. There are audios and video trainings, uh, advanced and cutting-edge healing techniques with me, uh, amazing meditations and energy management tools um, that will come in download form that you will have access to immediately. Over 22 hours I count <laughs> you'll be receiving. So you can get started right away whenever you join us. And you'll also um, have an easy to access article library organized by topics where there are over 60 some articles already in it. And I can tell you just one of these tips and techniques honestly can save you thousands of dollars either in healthcare bills or veterinary bills like they have for many of my clients, can save you in lost revenue or missed work or low productivity uh, because you're not feeling well or you're depressed or stuck. Uh, it happens all the time. And it can save you heartache. Let's just be real. It can save you the heartache of being stuck in emotional pain or mental anguish or spiritual confusion. <laughs> um, sometimes weeks, months, or even years can get wasted that way and literally can save your life. Many of my clients have told me it's saved their or their animal's life. Just one of these tools. So I am so wanting to empower <laughs> an army of healers <laughs> and get this world healed that I am gifting all of you just for joining so many tools and techniques that will literally change your life and change the planet as you're shifting um, the world around you. So in sum, if you want to save valuable precious time that can get wasted, not living your fullest potential. If you enjoyed these five keys to clarity, I have to tell you they're just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more. If you want to make an impact truly and heal your world and have that ripple effect go around the planet of that healing, I sincerely hope you consider joining us and come play in our new cafe. So, uh, Grab your favorite cup of joe, <laughs> java, or green tea, and let's hang out. Or as the Sufi mystic poet, one of my favorite poets um, and spiritual teachers, Rumi, says, there's a community of the spirit. Join it and feel the delight. Namaste.